Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I've just finished my degree at the University of Leeds and I'll be going on to study a Masters in Mathematics at the University of Cambridge in September. So today I thought I would talk to you a little bit about coding in a maths degree and what's entailed, whether you need to learn how to code before coming to university and you know what you get up to and what kind of coding languages you do learn when studying a maths degree. So I'm going to dive straight into the video and give you a bit more information. So how this video is going to work is I'm going to talk you through my three years at Leeds and what kind of programming I did in that time and then finally I'm going to tell you whether I think you should learn how to code before you go and do a maths degree. Okay so the first thing that I'm going to say is Pretty much every maths degree now has some form of coding incorporated in it. Um, I heard that from a lecturer that I recently did a talk on and he said that pretty much every single maths degree is now incorporating coding into the degree because coding and maths go hand in hand really really well um, and it's really nice to be able to learn how to code and incorporate that with mathematics. I personally know that I loved it over the last three years when I did do it. So first year, first year was we learned how to code um, pretty much as soon as we got to university. It was very much basic introduction. We used Jupyter Notebooks, which if you don't know what they are, is essentially a place, and I've kind of put an image on the screen now, where you can input code and then it will return it back to you. It's a very guided way of learning how to code. I didn't enjoy it as much as when I moved on to using IDEs, which I'll talk about in just a minute, but we used Jupyter Notebooks and it was incorporated into two compulsory modules. So it was compulsory, we had to learn how to do it. Um, and essentially we learnt Python in Jupyter Notebooks and that was as part of two modules I did at university and that was in Mathematics 1 and 2 and Number Systems I believe so we did kind of workshops, computer workshops and there were people there to help us to kind of show us what we had to do uh, and it was very much a nice way of understanding how to code I think we did have some assessments on them but it, first year was quite a while ago so I can't fully remember on that but it was basically just learning Python through Jupyter Notebooks and that was in the more maths modules. Then for probability and statistics, we learned R, so R Studio. It's basically a place where you can code statistics. You will learn it if you do statistics at university. So that's kind of like drawing histograms, things like that. We were definitely assessed on our ability to use R and R Studio in both probability and statistics one and two. So in first semester and second semester of first year, and we kind of had to do a report on it. So it was assessed more through reports, the statistics ones anyway. So that was first year. We also in first year learned LaTeX. So LaTeX is essentially a place that you can write maths in. If you see my dissertation video where I talk you through my dissertation, we had to write our dissertation in LaTeX. And it's really, really cool. I really enjoy it. You could probably write your own lecture notes in LaTeX. All the lecture notes that I've had at least, the majority of them will have been written in LaTeX. So it's kind of coding but not, it's just basically a really, really nice way of coding maths and writing maths um, in written format that looks really nice. So as part of one of our modules, number systems, we were, were required to write up all of our courseworks in LaTeX, which was a really nice way of learning how to do it. And then the final assessment for Mathematics 1 and 2 was a 5% report, and that report had to be written in LaTeX. So you, you had to kind of learn how to write LaTeX, you would get knocked marks for submitting a report that wasn't written in LaTeX. Another thing to say, and I think this, is, this was in first year, was the module Finance 1, I think, Financial Mathematics. I didn't, I personally didn't take that module, but I know that they did coursework on Excel. So be prepared if you're going to take finance or actuarial modules to learn Excel, <laughs> you know, a lot of Excel. So in summary, first year we learned Python, R and R Studio, LaTeX, and you will learn Excel if you do finance. So that was first year. Second year we then did a compulsory module called Computational Mathematics and we learned Python in a lot more depth. I really enjoyed this module. You learn how to code Python not in Jupyter Notebooks in an IDE, so an integrated development environment which is just essentially a place that you, you, code, you code in um, and the whole module was pretty much coursework based apart from a 20% exam and it was doing maths through code. It was really, really cool. I really, really enjoyed it. And doing that module set up a lot of the stuff that I was later to do in my third year for my dissertation. So that module was really, really helpful and just really enjoyable. I didn't really enjoy the coding element of things in first year as much. I enjoyed LaTeX, really enjoyed LaTeX. I kind of just saw the coding thing as like a side and it wasn't until I did this module that I was like, whoa yeah I love to code and that's obviously sparked my interest in a lot of other things like my tech channel where I teach people how to code now and that 
you know the reason for that is because of my university module computational maths so aside from python in second year we also did r studio again and that's because i took statistics modules so be prepared if you take statistics modules at university, you will most likely use R and R Studio. If you take finance and actuarial related modules, you'll probably use R and R Studio alongside Excel. And if you take a module like computational maths or take modules that have extra credits with computation, they usually call like the, the exam, um, the module with computation, be prepared to use Python. So that was second year. It was probably the year that sparked my interest with coding. In fact, it definitely was, and I realised how much I did enjoy it. And then finally in third year, so the only coding I did in my third year was my dissertation. I'm just going to pause for a second and say that if you take any statistics modules, actuarial modules, finance type modules, you will have had coursework, and usually that will have been in either R, R Studio or Excel. I know my housemate who did actuarial maths, he had a lot of coursework on excel i believe and i think our studio as well so for me i only had coding in my dissertation and that's because i took modules that didn't have coding element in them and that's because i didn't really want to go down the finance actuarial statistics kind of route so the coding that i did in my dissertation the reason i did coding in my dissertation was because i chose to at the University of Leeds, and I'm not sure how it works at any other university, we essentially have projects and the maths department released this long list of all these projects and they say whether they have any computational element in them and then you choose which one, I think you rank 10, I'm sure we had to rank 10 which is quite a lot, I know some people that got like their seventh choice which wasn't ideal, luckily I got my second choice which I was pretty happy with, um, to start with I was a little bit disappointed and then now looking back at it I'm very happy I got that project, it was yeah really really good so the reason i did coding in my project was because i chose a project that had a high element of coding so you essentially get this long list and it will say computation and it'll probably say no a little bit um, if you want to high level of computation so mine was a high level of computation because i love coding and yeah so that's the reason why i had a lot in my dissertation it just depends on which dissertation you got given you could quite easily go through the rest of your degree you know in third year having done no coding whatsoever so if you go to uni and you think i don't really like coding then don't worry you know you don't have to stick at it you don't need to do it but for me i think it's really really good it's a really good skill to have some coding jobs are incredibly highly paid if I didn't want to, you know, go down the PhD route or go and work in a space company, I was offered a software engineering internship and it got cancelled because of COVID, but then I was offered the graduate scheme for it um, to kind of interview for that. And the salary was very, very high. And I think if I was money motivated, then I would have definitely taken it because the salary was incredibly high. But because I'm more of someone who wants to do a job that I know that I enjoy and I'm more leaning towards PhD or, or kind of research in a space company I decided not to take it which some of you may say that's stupid but <laughs> you know if you're someone that's money orientated having coding as a skill is really really good to have and especially if you want to get a tech job and it's possible to get a tech job if you've done maths at university so now I'm going to get on to answering whether you should learn how to code before you go and do a degree or whether you should kind of learn in the midst of it I think it depends on what you learn at university. If you know that your course will have an element of coding, it doesn't harm you at all. If you know you want to do finance and actuarial and statistics, I would say that learning R and R Studio and Excel before is helpful. You don't necessarily need to. I didn't learn how to code until I got to university. I didn't even know it was part of the degree, if I'm honest. Um, so it took me a little bit by surprise when I did do it. So you don't need to, I think. If you're someone who wants to broaden their CV and, and put that they've learned how to code, it's always great. I have my own coding channel where I teach people how to code and I teach people Python, which is something that you use a lot at university. It's probably one of the most popular programming languages that students do use and one that a lot of math students go on to use later on um, if they get graduate jobs. So no, you don't need to learn how to code before you go. If you're interested and you want a bit of a head start, then I'd recommend learning it. It's fun i honestly have the best time doing it it might sound a little bit nerdy but yeah i honestly loved coding in, as part of my degree especially after i did the computational maths module and as part of my dissertation it was so so cool and that's the thing as well is if you do enjoy it you can do a dissertation with it in and that is so cool you learn so much more about coding which is really really cool so yeah you don't need to if you want to then 
by all means you know have a go i'll mention my other youtube channel code of the future where i do teach people how to code so if you're interested then it's always worth checking that out but like i said it's not a necessity you don't need to learn how to code before you go to university it's just if you're interested and you suppose you want a little bit of a head start so that is the video today i hope that's helped answer any questions around whether i do coding on my degree or if you need to learn how to code before you come to university my voice is quite literally breaking i filmed so many videos today so i'm going to bring this video to a close now i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video